ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's Friday, Stories of Hope. I'm so excited to introduce you to our first guest, David Price. For most of his life, he was angry, down on himself, seriously overweight, over 100 pounds overweight. He was living his life mediocre at best at everything he did and completely miserable with every aspect of his life. But when he began to learn the power of personal responsibility and empowering thoughts and words, his life completely transformed. Today, he lives a life that he loves and he teaches others how to do the same. He has been a certified professional life coach for more than five years. He created and continues to lead a successful life-changing coaching group that's helped dozens of clients achieve goals they desired but never believed was possible for them. His coaching is based on the knowledge and tools that worked for him. In addition to life coaching, he's been a minister for over 30 years and counting. Coached multiple sports over a span of four decades and taught high school for the last three years. He's been married for nearly 30 years, and that's a huge accomplishment right there. And he's the proud father of three children and a grandfather as well. Welcome to the show today, David Price. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's wonderful to have you. And I'm so excited to hear about what it means to take personal responsibility uh, for yourself. And that's when everything changed for you. Completely. So my father died when I was seven. Um, I'm an only child, as anybody who knows me will tell you. I'm the quintessential only child. Uh, but my father died when I was seven. And that was um, obviously not just a traumatic experience for, for me, uh, Cornelia, but I allowed that to become my excuse for not getting anything right, for failing at things, for being dysfunctional. Um, and so I lived that way. I'm a slow learner, uh, Cornelia. I lived that way for about 30 years. And finally, it got to be too much. Um, I'll spare you all the details, but I reached out to a friend for help. He shared a book with me called The University of Success. And that book completely changed my life because it taught me that I could take responsibility for my life and make changes. I didn't know that I could do that. And that sounds ridiculous, but I didn't know that I could do that. I thought I was helpless in the face of everything in my life. But when I learned I could take responsibility and did, my life completely changed. So basically, who wrote that book, University of Success? I'm curious. I've never heard of it unless I know the author. Og Mandino. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, maybe vaguely, I remember uh, hearing it in the, you know, there's so many people, so many amazing books have been written. Um, so basically, you were fence sitting. And were you possibly blaming your circumstances and the the things that were going on in your life that nothing's ever working out for you? Oh, no question. I, I was blaming my dad for not taking better care of himself, blaming my mother, as ridiculous as that is, for not doing a better job, as if that were an easy thing to do uh, as a single mom raising a boy. Um, I blamed churches that I attended. I blamed, um, you know, uh, uh, God to a degree. Um, I was angry at God for letting this happen. How did he not know that I needed a dad and why did he let this happen? So no doubt that blaming, excuse making, waiting. I did a lot of praying, but no acting. I was praying to God, please deliver me from this, but I wasn't doing anything. And so there was a lot of putting the expectations on everybody else and taking none of the responsibility. I think this is a big piece right here, what you just said. 
that you were praying. I think that's that's the big difference that a lot of people um, feel the disconnect of prayer and action. It's it's not just about praying and wishing or praying and praying and not taking action. Right? Absolutely. Oh no, hundred percent. I was. I really. I was waiting on God to just reach down and do something powerful because I had heard that he had done that for other people. And I thought, well, I need it as much as they do. He's going to reach down and, and do something spectacular in my life. And the fact is, Cornelia, he had already done spectacular things. He'd given me this power as a human being. Um, you know, he'd given me the Holy Spirit. He'd given me all these people in my lives. I had all of these powerful things and I was making use of none of them. And so I was putting all of the expectation on God and everybody else, but not doing anything myself. So basically, you know, you left yourself out of the equation and you were fence sitting and waiting for everybody else to come in and save you, if you will, and do do something for you. Waiting right. for somebody to ride in, Cornelia, but nobody rode in and nobody was going to ride in. That, nobody's coming. I mean, you know, there's been, God has done so many things. Other people have done so many things for us, Cornelia, poured into our lives. We've gotten so many blessings. And yet sometimes we still sit here and continue to wait for one more thing, one more thing. When the fact is we've got everything that we need right now, if we'll take responsibility if we'll make a decision, if we'll begin to take even tiny actions, if we'll begin to get to work, then all of these things, we're going to build momentum. Resources are going to show up. Solutions are going to show up. We've just got to make a decision and start taking action. That's so good. Uh, when some people might feel overwhelmed, taking responsibility, not sure where to start, right? Because there's you know, there's a lot of things to take responsibility for. And you did say take tiny actions, take tiny steps. Um, let's take a moment to, you know, when when you were taking responsibility for your weight, for your weight loss, for your, you know, health and well-being, when you took responsibility for that, uh, had you gotten to the point where you were so, uh, you know, frustrated and so, oh. like, oh. tell us about that. Oh, it was terrible. I was going to get my kids one day from school and driving to the next town to pick up my kids. And I'd already had lunch. Um, I stopped at Burger King. I got two Whopper Juniors and fries. And then I stopped on Dunkin' Donuts on the way out and got three donuts and some chocolate milk. And I remember all that so clearly, Cornelia, because that's what I was eating. As I was eating it, I was so uncomfortable. My waistband was cutting me in two and I felt so horrible. And I thought, I'm done. I I'm done right now. I'm finished. And the thing is, Cornelia, and I think this is crucial. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had tried a million diets. None of them had ever worked. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew that I was going to do it. And this is one thing I work with people on a lot. Well, sometimes when we don't know how we're going to do it, then we don't try to do it. The how is irrelevant. I tell people this all the time. The how is irrelevant. Forget the how. Don't worry about the how. Make the decision to do it, then start talking about it. When you make the decision and start talking about it, you're going to attract to your life all of the resources you need. Two weeks into that, Cornelia, I was talking to somebody and they said, hey, I've got a diet that really worked for me. You should try it. And I did. And I dropped a bunch of weight uh, using that diet because I had made a decision and I started talking about it. That's so good. I love that so much. How long have you been in this healthy way of being right now where you are? How long have you been there now? Five to seven years. I can't remember exactly, but it's been five to seven years. You know, Cornelia, it's remarkable that there's a statistic that of people who lose 10 pounds or more, only 10% of those people keep it off. Yeah. Um, and I'm so excited that I've been able to do that. And, and I don't, I'm not bragging about that, but I, I tell that because there's hope that you can do it if you will continue to practice good daily habits and practice a good mindset. That there's nothing magical to people who take it off and keep it off. It's a daily habitual mindset and behavior practice.
And it's basically you making the decision that I'm taking responsibility for this. I'm going to change it. And that's that's the reason why I asked you the question, because, you know, I know a lot of people yo-yo dieting, you know, listen, I mean, and to be fair, to be fair, you know, our uh, society has uh, lied to us and programmed us uh, with so many different diets that it, it it's like people don't know what to believe anymore yeah. what what's yeah. true what's not true and what's uh, going to help what's not going to help yep. uh but that's why i asked you that question how long have you kept it off because obviously you um have maintained over the years once you lost the weight and then like you said you practiced your daily habits that's what it. else did you what else did you victoriously <laughs> um claim your responsibility in well, my mindset was chief among them, uh, Cornelia. And as you know, when you get the mindset right, everything else follows. And so I had to really get serious about my mindset. Um, I took coaching. I read books. I got all sorts of personal growth content into my head. Um, and, and I got my mindset. I just I got it right. I, I, I got working on my mindset and I've continued to work on it. So, you know, uh, getting rid of uh, limiting beliefs, uh, negative thoughts those kinds of things, practicing gratitude, um, not asking uh, crappy questions anymore, um, eliminating disempowering words like can't and problem and that sort of thing. So there was all this work around mindset. And I I just think mindset is 100% of the game. Yeah, it sounds like you took 100% uh, charge of your life and you are now the victor instead of the victim. And you're helping so many others in your coaching practice and also in your coaching groups uh, with with the work that you've done on yourself. So how can people find you where they where can they look you up on social media? Sure. I'm on uh, Facebook. Uh, You can look up David Price on Facebook. There's a stunningly handsome man that comes up right at the top there. Uh, (laughs) I'm the one I'm the one right underneath him. Uh, But if you look up David Price in Moorhead City, North Carolina, you can connect with me there. And I would love to connect and help anybody out. Yeah, that's so cool. Now, are you still teaching high school right now? I do. I teach Bible. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my gosh. So you are you're still teaching high school. You're teaching Bible. Yes, and ma'am. you're still making a difference in the school system, which is so important, especially now that you are teaching active action prayer, prayer and action. Uh, yes, I love it. Yes, exactly. Right? Exactly. Prayer. That's right. I mean, that's that's huge. You know, uh, there's a lot of people, too, that have given up faith in, you know, in in religion with all the, the programs, you know, that that have been out there all the different things so that you're bringing god back into the the forefront which is exactly uh very very important especially nowadays where so many people have lost faith that's one of the reasons david why we do these beautiful stories of hope is to inspire people to keep going and to reach higher and to go deeper and to you know uh persevere through the challenges that they're facing. Yes, yes. When people ask me what's the, you know, if you could say one thing to people, what is it? It's always keep going. Um, Don't stop. Keep working. Keep trying things. Keep talking to people. Don't stop trying. Um, That next time that you try, it might be the time that everything clicks and and you're a new person. That's good because usually I ask uh, my guests for one final (laughs) word and you just gave it. That's it. (laughs) <laughs> That's so perfect, David. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show thank today. You. We appreciate you. you. And audience, we're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm I'm just so moved right now to introduce you to our next guest. And uh, you're going to see why. Jamie Haberman, she's a dedicated Christian wife, mother of six, homeschool teacher, and hospice nurse. She's a newly published author and entrepreneur, owner of Hospice Buddy LLC, as well as Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Chronic Illness Warrior. Welcome to the show, Jamie. There's so much more I can say about your bio, but before, when we were in the green room and I was asking what you wanted to highlight on the show today. Uh, Say all that again. Okay. (laughs) 
So uh, my name is Jamie. I have been a hospice nurse for 16 years. And throughout the course of my career, I've worked in different areas in the inpatient um, settings with cancer patients, um, outpatient setting with cancer patients, as well as um, inpatient and outpatient hospice and facilities. And I really have a good understanding of how hospice works and what's involved and disease processes um, that, you know, I've gathered all this knowledge throughout the past few years. And although hospice provides some really great care and you have frequent routine visits from chaplains and social workers and nurses and aides, um, some of these families are still not feeling supported. I get the calls in the middle of the night. They're still scared. They don't know what's coming. They're not prepared. They, um, you know, their loved one has a change of condition and they really have a hard time dealing with those things and keeping their composure and understanding that this is the process that people take at end of life. So I think that by having one person helping to support you every day, who knows the end of life process, who knows what's coming um, and can help prepare you and educate you. So when that patient does pass, you're feeling a lot more at peace. You're not living with regret and knowing, you know, could I have done something different or um, did I do the right thing? You know, people live with these heartaches for long after the passing of somebody. But I think that in throughout my life, um, my faith has grown in God and I know that there is a heaven and I know that once they pass, they do go to a better place. And there's nothing that can change my mind of that with all my years of hospice nursing and all of the things that I've seen um, and the things that have happened in my own life to help me rise above the challenges that I've faced. Um, there's definitely a God, there's definitely a heaven and they are at peace. And I don't think that when people hold um, those feelings of guilt and regret that it helps to heal them through that process. I, I'm just so moved by what you're doing and what you're talking about because you know you are you're exposing a leak or a, 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 you know a, what in the system that that it's not 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 supporting. So like you said, hospice is a great they've got they've got a lot of great resources and they're great it's great what they're doing, but there's still something missing because you are getting the calls you you do see and have seen. Uh, through your work, the work that you're doing, that there's there's some things missing, and we need to step up. And you stepped up with, uh, you know, uh, founding your company, uh, Hospice Buddy, which is is beautiful. And then all your training of, you know, being a mother, being a, uh, the faith that you have, and being a coach, and all the things that you've done that you, um, you put all of that together and now you're helping people um, face uh, those times. And it's, it's not an easy job. It's not, it's not like it's joy, you know? It's not like you're, you're, you're having to be with people that are really sad and sick. How do you deal with that? Um, I think after so long, you do kind of, build a little bit of a a boundary and you kind of learn to block certain things off um, but there are ones that really pull at your heart you know you make a connection with the family or maybe they're similar age or circumstances to you and you tend to feel what they're going through a little bit harder so when when those people do pass I mean it, you know death is sad and we're all going to go through it yeah. um, I'd like to make that transition easier for people so they're not feeling so alone and scared and hopeless and, you know, give them some sense of hope and, and peace. Yeah. So um, you're doing this currently um, in the city where you live, or do you also support people online? Um, it's actually just online. Um, I don't do any physical visits. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder. So my bedside nursing, um, that was getting really hard for me because I would go to boost people up and 
um, my shoulder will come out of place or a finger, you know, and that physically was very hard on me doing that physical work. Um, so for the past few years, I've been thinking about how could I work from home, but still do my love of hospice. So, um, you know, one night I had prayed and I asked for God to show me what I'm supposed to be doing and clear the path to make it happen. And in the past four and a half months, it's been incredible. Absolutely incredible. Are you working online? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so people started, you started mm -hmm. getting, you started getting requests to work, work for people to work with you. Yeah. I, I'm in a lot of support groups. And so I go and I scroll through the feeds and I see, you know, if people are going through certain things, I'll comment on them, um, throw my two cents in. Um, and then if they want to contact me, that that's how most of these conversations start is people have contacted me through those groups. Um, you know, and sometimes it's just an easy question or sometimes, you know, I do call them every day while they're going through that to make sure that, you know, the patient's okay, they're comfortable, the family's okay, they're, you know, not anxious and Right. Like you said, time. it's like you said, the people that would contact mm -hmm. you before, um, basically you are addressing their needs. You, you, mm -hmm. that's what you're doing. You're getting their needs met in the middle of, um, you know, death in the middle of yeah. the deep sadness of what people have to go through. And like you said, you know, you have a strong faith and a strong belief in God. And so that's, serving and that's um again you holding that energy and believing in that and being in that that is supporting the people that you're working with right because yeah. uh that's it's a very scary thing to face to face death and to face loss for the people that are left behind right it is and then i also created on my website there's a area for um over all my years of caring for people at home i thought of almost every piece of equipment or supplies or things I would need for in the home. Um, so I compiled quite a list and it's all up on my website under the store. So when you are caring for someone at home, there's supplies in there that you may not have even thought of that are really helpful um, as well as like caregiver logs and journals to track medications and keep on top of things at home. Jamie, do you have a YouTube channel? I do. I haven't put up any videos yet. But so I do intend to do some how to videos because I am a coach and I, that's one of the things that I do. And right away, I would love to see 10 minute videos from you that talk about being what, what it means, you know, to let go, what you're offering, what you're going through, just so that people can that, that there's a momentum that's created based on your company, the, the work that you're doing. But I'd love to see you put that YouTube um, channel together. If you're already going through the feeds and all that, you already have all the information, you already have everything. So it's, um, you know, it's definitely something I would love to see you do. And yeah, I do have intentions between working full time and then trying to build my business and homeschooling the kids. It's a pretty busy life. Um, but the intentions are there and, you know, it's only been four and a half months in and I've yeah. already had booked four podcasts and I'm on my second book. And so, and I'm helping people every day in these support groups. So it's all been an awesome experience so far. So eventually I will get to the videos and there will be, a, I have a whole list of them to do. It's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, it's going to be great. I, I, I know you're doing a lot of work. It's huge. So I hope that you also have the support, you know, um, that have, have people come in, call people into your life that will help you get some of these things done because you don't have to do it all yourself. So let's tell the audience where they can go check you out on your website, where you are on social media, and where people can look you up and, and learn more about how you support them. Yeah. So um, if you go to hospicebuddy.com, that is my main website. Um, on there, there's the blogs and the store that I was speaking of. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to be putting up a page of resources up there that would be really helpful. Um, that's in the works. Um, I'm also on Facebook under Hospice Buddy. And I did start an Instagram 
also hospice buddy. So um, keep it consistent throughout. You can find me in any of those places. Um, also medium. I'm a, I'm a big writer. I love writing. And so I found that medium was very nice. So I could um, do a lot of education on there. So if somebody's going through a certain symptom, they can find um, a certain blog pertaining to that symptom and learn a little bit about that symptom. Yeah, that's, that's really, you're doing extraordinary work, really Thank extraordinary you. work. You know, I'm so proud of you. Uh, you know, make sure that you also take good care of yourself because you're, you're putting a lot of energy out there and that you, you also, you know, uh, receive the support that you need as well. So, um, Jamie, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It's really interesting because you look so young. Uh, I don't know if people have told you that, but you look really young. Yeah, it's the Ellers Danlos. Oh, okay. Yeah, but my my oldest son is twenty one already. So, yeah, you you look like you're twenty. So, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Uh, thank you so much, Jamie, for coming on. I wish you so much good luck with everything that you're doing. And audience, we're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, everyone. My next guest is Carol Mirko. And she is helping people to access the healer within. That's what she's doing now. She's the master of change. And her path is from going from Wall Street uh, analyst to NPR and PBS cooking host. And she's now a mindset expert and health and self-mastery coach. That's what, what her passion is to help others make changes in their own life, to be able to uh, master their own thoughts and become the best version of themselves. Uh, Carol's Hallmark program is Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza's neuroscience based change program, change your mind, create new results. So welcome to the show today, Carol. We could go on and on about your credentials from the past and I want to hear from you. So how's it going? <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, it's so funny because I think that we can, we can focus on the past, but what I've learned um, in life, particularly through a, a healing um, a journey, is that we really, uh, our job is to focus on our future, our intentions, and, and our now. So anybody could, you know, Google me and find out about my past, but I care about now and creating the best life of my future. And then that's what I'm now teaching, so. <laughs> And I think that's so great because in the green room before we came on here right now is you, you said that what you want to do is you want to help people access the healer within because you want to support them to, you know, take the focus off the Western me medicine, which that's fine. It had its has its place. It still does. And that's fine. But that we all have the, you, why don't you talk? That sure. Whatever. Awesome. Yeah, we do. We, uh, the answer lies within the healer is within us. And how I discovered that was I was on a healing journey for a, an incurable, theoretically incurable autoimmune eye disease, which is extremely rare. So it's an orphan disease and they, it, they don't do a lot of research. And so the, I guess the, the, the medical model that most people seem to want, even in this country, is fix me. Like, so you show up and they're just giving you drug cocktails, right? To say, well, try this. Well, that didn't work. Try that. And over about a year and a half, it just, it was toxing me out. And I really didn't feel like I was getting better. And I also felt like the drugs were making me sick. And I was actually walking on the beach one day and it was like, it was like a, a, like a download where it was just like, you know, you can do this yourself. You, you can heal yourself. And, and it, it was at that time, which is so fascinating that like all these openings happened where like the, the healers showed up or the teachers showed up or the modalities showed up and I was ready for them. Right. They just, um, and, and so I, I, you know, I met with shaman and I, you know, um, well, acupuncture and just stuff that I'd never done and 
plant medicine and and I even became a cannabis coach because I learned that cannabis is really helpful for inflammation. So it's like, so I, I kind of decided to go down almost every rabbit hole I could find and become like a mini expert. <laughs> and um, but what what I what really ended up helping me was the um, the mindset work and meditation programs and books of Dr. Joe Dispenza. And so that's why I really lead with that as my, um, my, my like hallmark program, because I got certified to teach his, uh, some of his work. And because I really began to understand that we are, we, we really bring our past into our future. And there's a lot of things in our past that are super unconscious. There are habits that were created either as results of like little mini traumas when we were little kids or, um, you know, wanting to please our parents. So we would, you know, kind of adjust our personalities. I mean, they're just such subtle things, but they become big things as we become adults. And we, we bring these behaviors and these habits and these patterns forward. And I was able to really take a deep, deep dive. I, you know, the, to light the match in the dark place and be like, Oh man, like, you know, you're, you're, yes, you're all smiles. You're like a pleasant person, but like, you were like, you just, you know, I really tapped a lot of stuff like down, you know, and like, um, people pleaser, um, you know, worked on what, you know, not we're talking about wall street, but wall street was one of those careers where as a woman. And when I started, it was, you know, kind of mid eighties, like, you know, all we wanted to do was be like men right? Like, cause we, you know, even the suits that we wore, those Harvey Bernards, they look like men's, you know, suits with bow ties. And, um, and we basically had to shut ourselves down. I remember even saying I was going into machine mode, right. Oh. To, to do my job, right. I was aware, but not aware, right. Like I didn't know what it was doing to, to my being. Yeah. I, I think you you hit on so many points. You hit on so many points. I just want to tell you that you're excellent at your articulation, by the way, and and, and storytelling. Uh, one of the things that you know you you said you became an expert in so many different healing modalities. Uh, in so many, did I did I read in your bio that you're also a qigong qigong instructor as well? So you've got yes. Joseph Benza, you've got qigong, you've got all the all the different uh, healing modalities, which come right back to, again, that what you were talking about, awakening the healer within that download that you got on the beach. And that is that we have the ability to self regenerate and self heal. Now, did you heal your eye, your vision thing? What I'm going to say is that it's 90% healed, right? Because I feel like it's an interest that's it. So the main symptoms are gone. Like, so I am no longer have um, the, like, like I used to get like a vitreous haze. Like, like it, it would be, I'd just be talking to you and it would be like I was driving through a fog bank all of a sudden. And so that's gone completely. Like I haven't had that experience in, in a few years. And then I was, um, my retinas, um, were would like go wild if I moved in from a dark room to a light room and a light room to a dark room. It was like a bad disco, right? It was just like because they were trying to like adjust to the the rapid change in light, which m normal, you know, when you have healthy eyes, they just you don't even know that they're adjusting. But I was experiencing the adjusting, and that has pretty much stopped. Um, I can read in dim light now, which I couldn't have done before. The, the last hurdle for me is driving at night again. Like that's just, and but everybody that I talk to goes, it's a ter it's like the light, everybody's headlights are so, you know, bright now. And everybody I talk to, it's like, it may not be your eyes. And I was like, I don't know. I, I feel like that's my, that's my next, you know, hurdle is the, the nighttime driving. <laughs> Well, I just want to say I'm not particularly comfortable in driving at night either with I, I totally relate to the headlights and what you're talking about. So, uh, Carol, you are just absolutely amazing with, uh, you know, how you've put all of this together. And I would love to have you on for, you know, another show where we can speak longer 
And, um, but let's tell the audience right now where they can look you up on your social media, where they can find out more about you and learn more about how you can help them to uh, awaken the healer within. Well, thank you. So I, I created um, my new business, which is Love, Eat, Heal. And the website is that loveeatheal.com. And my Instagram handle is Love Eat Heal. You could, I love people just emailing me. You can email me at Carol with an E at loveeatheal.com because that's, you know, just, a, I, I love personal contact. And, um, and Facebook is just Carol Marco. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of evolving my, my whole presence brand. with this, with this work. Brand. Yes. <laughs> You're, you're evolving your whole brand. Yeah. What do you want to leave people with today in this final one minute? What do you want to say to people that are listening to you and meeting you for the first time? What would you like to leave people with? <laughs> what I always leave them with that love will heal the world. And first, first, the first, per first person you need to love though is yourself. And when you love yourself, when you can find that self love, we ease into um, healing not only ourselves but we, we create a vibration that elevates the consciousness of the planet. That's so beautiful. And I just wanna to add to that by saying, when we talk about self-love, you know, it's easy to love ourselves when we feel really good and everything's great and all the wonderful things are happening. It's much more challenging to love ourselves when we feel ugly, when we feel fat, when we feel sick, or the shadow is present in our lives. That is where the gold is. So that's where to bring love in. Carol, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. And we're going to take a break now and we'll be right back. Thank you, Cornelia. Welcome back, everyone. My next guest is Patty Handy. After spending a combined 20 years as a financial advisor and mortgage advisor and having countless conversations with women, Patty decided to pursue her dream of financial coaching for women. She's a teacher at heart and loves to educate and empower women with money smarts. Hallelujah. Understanding that money can be an overwhelmed topic for many, she is audaciously passionate about uh, creating financial confidence when it comes to your well being. Welcome to the show today. Patty. Thank you, Cornelia. I appreciate it. Great to be here. So how did you get started in this work? Why are you doing this work? Well, uh, honestly, the seed was planted over two decades ago. Um, I went through a divorce when my son was 18 months old. And I remember laying in a fetal position, uh, just sobbing. Uh, this was right after the divorce um, with the overwhelm of the emotional you know, distraught and the grief and the, uh, you know, raising my little boy. And at that time I had left my corporate banking world. So I was not working and all these, the gambit of, of, of experiences and a very strange God wink, I call it a download came in and it was, you're going to be okay financially because you, you understand how to manage your money. Now at that moment in time, I was not thinking about my money. I was just emotionally just sad and grieving my loss and it was just a very strange download and months months later when I came out from underneath the the cloud um, I thought I'm going to someday turn this around and help women get through this piece because most women who are going through divorce or have lost their spouse from you know being, being a widow um, they struggle with the financial piece and I just knew that I wanted to somehow take this unfortunate circumstance and turn it around and, and serve, you know, women in some capacity. Yeah. So you, this is great that you, you know, that you're helping women in that, in that way, because you're also an executive coach, you're a certified uh, life coach as well. And so you are, um, you understand the, the mortgage business, the finance business, and like uh, the universe or God said to you, um, you've got this financial piece down. So that makes you absolutely 100% uh, qualified to support the women to uh, create a financial stable foundation. So when you meet women, what do you feel are the, the biggest challenges that they're faced with when it comes to managing their money? A lot of it stems from lack of financial confidence. There is a, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of fear, um, I have, you know, heard their shame and embarrassment. 
Um, they don't even know where to start. They don't know what where to even begin with this. And oftentimes, depending upon where they're in that journey of their divorce, if it's early on, there's a lot of still grief that they're trying to process. And, you know, one of the biggest things I say is, you know, you shouldn't be making a really big decision about your money when you're in the middle of that crazy grief. Um, and I'll I'll share a story about about my situation. Even though I knew how to manage money, I was the situation. You know, in my marriage, I managed the money. I did the investing. My ex husband didn't know any of that. And um, even with that knowledge and that that confidence, post divorce, I made some bad decisions. And it was usually because I was emotionally a mess. I was not in a good place. Um, and and I'm like, oh gosh, you knew better than that, Patty. What were you thinking? Why did you do that? And you know, I gave myself grace, and we move on, and we just we learn, and we just go forward. I, I didn't get stuck in that, oh, shoulda, woulda, couldas, right? Because that doesn't serve anybody. Um, but it's so important that we just accept, you know, the situation currently, gain the education, gain the gain the confidence, learn from those that you trust, and um, and just take one little baby step at a time. So what does it look like when somebody wants to work with you? Like, like, who's your, who's your woman? Who's your woman that, um, that is calling you that is ready to have a conversation with you? What, what is she going through? Yeah, she's typically uh, post-divorce and, and or lost a spouse. Um, spouse took care of the money. They, she doesn't know what she's doing. There is a lot of, you know, information overload, doesn't know who to trust um just the feeling of of again i don't know where to start and and i don't know even where statements are my husband took care of everything i don't know what i'm doing and so um when they come to me i have a a, a program it's a digital course along with group coaching and you know we get them into the course which covers nine different areas and we can go into those pieces i won't necessarily go into that now but the transformation truly is um you know financial confidence feeling in control getting that stability, that security back. Um, no more fear of, am I going to run out of money? No more fear of, I don't want to be a burden to my kids. I mean, those are common things that I, that I hear. And um, I want them to come out the other side and feel like, okay, I've got this. Now they don't need to be expert, you know, experts in, 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 uh, in, in the markets and understanding, you know, the debt ceiling and all, all those complex things. It's about, okay, in my household, I've got a handle on things right now, and this is good. And that confidence gives them a place of peace and it gives them a place, a place of, okay, now I, I know what I'm doing. And if I decide to work with the financial advisor, um, I know the questions to ask. And when they're talking, you know, when the advisor is speaking to them, they understand what they're saying. They're you know, the, the lingo. So it's that place of uh, just, again, financial confidence. And and I'll note if if they're in a situation and I saw this when I was an advisor, um, if you go into a meeting with a financial advisor and you don't understand something, you're comfortable saying, you know what? Hold on. I don't understand what you just said. Back it up <laughs> and simplify what you just told me because I, I don't get it. And be confident enough and comfortable enough in that place of saying that versus just, okay, I, I you know, fine, I trust you, you know, deal with it. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like uh, what you're helping women do also is giving them, you know, the confidence they need to uh, take charge of their financial foundation. 100%. Yeah, do you feel that, you know, like the reason why it's like that where women have not looked or the husband handled the finances and they, the women weren't involved um, is because uh, they, they were never given permission before to look. And I've seen the gambit of stories. Um, I think most, most of it is a generational thing. You know, the uh, boomers and older, you know, a lot of times the husbands just took care of it because they just did. And whether they knew what they were doing or not is another story, but it's just, they just took care of it. And the wives just felt comfortable with that. And they just, they dealt with it. The, the newer generations are more proactive, which I love. They are more engaged in wanting to learn. They want to take control. You know, the 20, 30 year old, 40 year olds, they are in a different place than the 70 year olds that, I, that I've worked with. So that's great. We were making strides and we're headed in the right direction with that. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily permission, but I think it was more just the, um, it's normal to let my husband take care of the money. That's what my parents did and, you know, and so forth. So um, it's really more of a generational thing. And I think we are, like I said, headed in the right direction, which is great. Yeah, and I also love that what you're doing is because you've gone through it yourself first with, you know, um, 
you made some bad decisions because you were emotionally not feeling strong and not feeling stable during that time when you were going through your divorce, you now have that sensitivity to when another person is, another woman is going through that kind of thing on an emotional level first. And then as a coach, I'm sure you understand that too, that you're able to uh, help the woman to take a pause and yes. just before, you know, wait uh, 24, 48 hours, maybe even longer before you decide to, to do something because on an emotional level, this is part of the clearing and releasing and letting go of what's right. happening. Is that right? Yes, 100%. And and we want to get rid of the shame. It's a judgment-free zone. We, we want to get rid of the fears. And if they're comfortable enough, just being in that place and leaning into that place of where they're at, they can then take the steps to to move forward and, and get out of that. Yeah. Um, but if they stay stuck in that shame, embarrassment, it doesn't help anybody. It's like, okay, let's just get past this. Let's just, yeah. fine. This is, this yeah. is great. I mean, even I knew better and I still made mistakes. So let's just, let's just move forward. Yeah. That's beautiful. Now I see you, you have a mic there. Do you have a podcast? I, I don't have a podcast yet. I'm considering it. I'm um, on, on a lot of podcasts as a guest, which has been a blast. Okay. Well, I would like to talk to you about becoming a, a podcaster on our network at TTR. Uh, out of okay. Seattle. So that that would be something to talk to you about. Okay. Um, I'd love to do that. Now let's tell the audience on how to get to uh, find you and learn more about your work and what you do. Well, um, so as of Monday next week, I'll, I'll get this in really quickly. Um, I'm having a free five-day masterclass. It starts on Monday the 19th. So you'll go to pattyhandy.com forward slash masterclass. Uh, that's one word to register and learn more about that. And uh, my website is just pattyhandy.com. It's patty with the I, handy with a Y. And uh, you can click on the Minding Her Money roadmap, uh, or I'm sorry, Minding Her Money link, and you can download a free roadmap of the of the program, the nine areas that, that you should follow in order to get kind of financially back on track. So a couple freebies and then the masterclass next next Monday is going to be awesome. Next week will be a beautiful thing. And if you can't attend live, I will be recording it and sending out the recording so you can uh, watch that later. That's great. And do you when people, you know, are thinking about working with you, do you offer a free discovery call or how do you do that? Absolutely. Yes. Once you download the link, you watch the training and then you'll have an op opportunity to uh, book a call with me. It's a free 30 minute discovery call. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Patty, I think it's wonderful the work that you're doing, empowering women to Thank have you. strong financial uh, foundations and really, uh, you know, take charge of their lives. That's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening and tuning into the Cornelia Stephanie Show. If you're watching this podcast later next week when it's uploaded on YouTube, please like and, and uh, share and subscribe to the channel because that always helps us. It helps with the algorithm. So we we love it when you, when you do that. And uh, we'll see you again next week, Friday, for more Stories of Hope. Thanks everybody for listening and tuning in and we'll see you next week. Thank you, bye-bye. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.